In the beginning, the world was dark, without life, without form, without design. There were no ears to hear. If there were, this would be the sound, flatline. And God said, clear. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? The beating of waves, the beating of wings, it's the pulse of all living things. And man's heart beat true and strong. But not for long. So God said, clear. Rain, 40 days and 40 nights. A storm-tossed ark, no end in sight. And then the sky went clear. And out of the clear blue, a sign. And the pulse was steady, but only for a time. And then, upon a midnight, clear, word became flesh. A mother holds her baby to her breast. Two hearts beat as one. Holy Mother, Holy Son, And then a man marches to a different beat. A pulse not picked up by the powerful, heard only by the poor, the sick, and the meek. Did you see his miracles? Did you hear him speak? Yes, we heard, but we will have the last word. And then God said, clear. Now, a glorified heart beats. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? A sacred heart, a powerful pulse surging through the body. And you are the body. Now go into all the world and tell this heartfelt story. Are there any questions? Is everything clear? clear. Good evening. Thank you. You don't realize how daunting it is to be standing up here. The only thing I could think of that was tougher was when I had to call bingo as a newly ordained priest at Presentation Our Lady of Victory. That was a tough crowd. What's tough about this is you've had Father Tim Burney and Father J.J. Mech for the past few years. It's like Jimmy Kimmel, <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. Tonight you get Lawrence Welk. <laughs> you 
guess we won't need the rim shots after all. <laughs> I want to thank the seminarians for that wonderful opening presentation. It is wonderful to know that God, from the beginning right up until today, is committed to uniting us with himself. Even when we fail, his heart of love kept on beating for new life for us until finally he sent his son in the care of his holy mother to be our redeemer and to make everything new. And that's what we celebrate tonight, the heart of Jesus. His heart that beats with love for every one of us, his heart being formed in each seminarian at Sacred Heart. Join me again in expressing our appreciation for these men. Welcome one and all. We're so very glad that you're here. And what a wonderful place to be. In the history of the seminary's efforts to build friendships and support, we've been in a variety of places around the metro area. Personally, I'm very glad that we're here in this wonderfully rededicated Kobo Center in the heart of the city of Detroit. Um, I have a special... Let's... Feel free to interrupt with applause any time. Okay. <laughs> I'm especially glad because we're only yards away from where Antoine de la Motte Cadillac built the first church dedicated to St. Anne, who is now the patron of our church here in Detroit. I talked about how daunting it is to be standing up here at puts me in mind of a story I heard about a priest in Ireland uh, in the West. I think it was in County Mayo, God help us. The Irish always say for County Mayo, they always say, oh, poor County Mayo, God help us. The cows are so small, you have to put them on a table to milk them. <laughs> well, this priest was in a country village, and people were getting kind of lax. And so he decided it was time for a parish mission. And he knew that if you really wanted to put it to the people and turn their hearts around, you had to have a redemptorist. And so, I know who's applauding there, her brother's a redemptorist. <laughs> with apologies to the Jesuit brothers and caps who are with us this evening and others. But they would put the fear of God back into the hearts of his people. And so, He'd heard about this Father Murphy, and he was able to arrange for him to come. Father Murphy came and preached at all the masses, and so the first night was dedicated to the women. And word had gotten around, and so the women came in great numbers, because he's a spellbinding speaker. And the next night was for the men, and the women went home and told their husbands, you're going to hear this man. And so they came, and the last night, Everybody was there. There was not a seat to be had in the church. People were standing up and down the side aisles, sitting along the back. They were sitting in the windowsills. They were gathered around the back entrance, the doorway, so they could hear. Father Murphy said, tonight I'm going to tell you about the glories of heaven and the horrors of hell. So he went on for 45 minutes talking about the beauty of life with God in heaven. At the end of 45 minutes, he said, all right, everybody who wants to go to heaven, stand up. And of course, everybody in the place stood up. Well, then he launched into an hour and 15 minutes on the torture of hell. <laughs> Pitchforks and flames and suffering and searing pain for all eternity. After an hour and 15 minutes, women were weeping Men were trembling. He said, is there anyone out there now having heard about hell foolish enough to want to go there? And Doolin, the town near Duwell, sitting on the floor in the back, 
his back against the wall, he may have had something for medicinal purposes before coming to the chapel that evening. <laughs> Scoots himself up. And Father Murphy had heard from the pastor about Doolin. And he says, Jimmy Doolin. He says, glory be to God, don't tell me you actually want to go to hell. And Doolin looked at him and he says, oh, no far, but I felt badly seeing you stand up there all by yourself. I know how far Murphy felt. <laughs> when I was invited to be the Master of Ceremonies this evening, it took me back to my own years at Sacred Heart. First as a student, things looked a little different back in 1961 when I started at Cardinal Mooney Latin School. I looked a little different too. It'd be just about two of me up here now of what I was then. The Red Wings were still playing in Olympia. Cassius Clay upset Sonny Liston for the heavyweight championship of the world. The Mustang was introduced at the New York World's Fair. And the toast of the town on Sunday evening at 8 o'clock, Ed Sullivan introduced the Beatles. I was ordained in 1975, and then a little-known company founded in April of that year called Microsoft introduced the first personal computer. So a lot of things are different now, but there was still that same exciting tempo. What there was then, there is today. It's a rhythm, a pulse of life that comes from a very special place from the heart of Jesus himself. St. Matthew says in his Gospel of Jesus, at the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. St. Matthew goes on to say, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few, so ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Tonight we celebrate the heart of Jesus, his heart that beats with love for all people. Being formed and our laborers for his harvest are seminarians, deacons, and lay ministers at Sacred Heart Major Seminary. And we celebrate your support sending them out into the harvest with the heart of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Tonight we're going to have a fantastic evening I believe that you will leave inspired. Before we eat, I want to take this opportunity to recognize and thank some of our special friends. I'm pleased to introduce some of the special guests and sponsors who embody the heart of Jesus, who've come together to make this beautiful evening possible. First, I'm honored to present our host for this evening, also an alumnus of Sacred Heart, college class of 1970 and former rector. They never put this in the script, but what he really loved to do was teach philosophy. He's now chairman of the board of trustees at Sacred Heart Major Seminary. Our Archbishop and Chief Shepherd, His Excellency Alan H. Vigneron, Archbishop of Detroit. It's really got that wave down. Good job. <laughs> We're also... <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. <laughs> yes, from the elbow. Lead with the elbow, right. We're also very honored to have His Eminence Adam Cardinal Maida, Archbishop Emeritus of the Archdiocese of Detroit, present this evening. Archbishop or Cardinal, would you please stand so we can <laughs> affirm you. <laughs> Different style, but still effective. 
I also want to have you join me in acknowledging the presence of and really thank by your applause for their service, the Auxiliary Bishops of the Archdiocese of Detroit, His Excellency Bishop Michael Burns, His Excellency Bishop Arturo Cepeda, His Excellency Bishop Donald Hanchen, Note to self, do not talk with hands. And His Excellency Bishop Francis Reese. Also joining us this evening are two distinguished alumni of Sacred Heart. Please welcome His Excellency Bishop Earl Boyer, former Dean of Students, and Bishop of the Diocese of Lansing. And another friend, we welcome His Excellency Bishop Bernard Harrington, former Rector of Sacred Heart, and Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Winona. Bishop Harrington has mastered the two-hand wave. Please, don't try this at home. Also pleased to have with us, I believe I saw him earlier. I know I saw him this morning at another gathering at breakfast. Deputy Mayor of the City of Detroit, Dr. Isaiah Ike McKinnon. This is dating me, but we like Ike. <laughs> Only half the crowd got that. And I believe we also have with us the State Senate Majority Leader, Mike Kowal. Senator Kowal. Please also join me in welcoming my good friend, the present Rector, President of Sacred Art Major Seminary, Monsignor Todd Lajeunesse. He's ambidextrous. 